Like always, this video is brought to you by Bottom Slap, which is the pants that I'm currently wearing. They are presentable, they are comfortable, and I just like it. Lah. So if you are interested, link down below. Enjoy the video. What's up guys? Welcome back to another reaction series. And what are we going to check out today? Uh, today, we're going to check out this YouTube channel called Berani Boy. Berani Boy. Yeah. Dare to do. Yeah, dare to do. Not under Nike. Lah. <laughs> So this guy, I think he's that guy in engineering. So he does a lot of DIY projects and also explains a lot of like concepts in let's say in computers, in gadgets, in Oh IT, cool. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of stuff, a lot of like, good stuff. So this is a project of I see a backyard. Yeah, he, this is his DIY project. It's a workshop mm. for his own studio. Yeah. Cool. So it's a DIY kind of thing. Wow, like DIY is really picking up. Uh. And I, I don't know whether it's because you cannot afford it or it's because you just like doing stuff your own. Like it takes a lot of time to... Mm, I can only admire because I will definitely hire somebody to do it. <laughs> okay, so today we will react to Berani Buat. And this is the ASMR version. Ice Belanja ASMR version. Whoa, the backyard is so huge, man. Okay, so this is very obvious, a corner lot. And why corner lots exist is because it's at the end of a junction and there's a restriction to how many houses you can build together. So if you have like uh, two rows or three rows of the house, sometimes you see the eh, why the center portion of the end lots are not in the center of the row. So there's a fire requirements between like if a house catch fire, there's only a minimum that will catch together. Wow. So you cannot go too long. Then why corner lots shape are very weird because it's in accordance to the road. So the road is determined by the form of the land. If the land's form is okay, if it's a squarish one, then you can be really efficient. Meaning every house gets a very squarish one. But then if you have this one, right? So the, some corner lots is, are like this where the empty land is way bigger than the house itself. So you get weird things and a lot of people associate feng shui with it. Do you want a front more bigger to the back? But means that your wallet, is, you cannot store as much money. Then the others like, oh, my front is more narrow than my back. So it means that I cannot earn as much as I save. All those are just saying, right? Because like what Dato Joey Yap say in the Chinese New Year episode, right? The land does not know what shape it is, one. So it's so it's really like how is that direction or how you manifest the form of the building to your own destiny or chart. But sometimes, right? It's just to me, it's the shape of the land. If it's a triangle and there's an edge at the end, right? And you open the door, every time you look at the edge. Then it's, it's a sore time and it, it just creates distraction from you every single day. Like you open your door, right? Right in front is a lamppost. Of course you don't like it, ma. Then every morning, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you start the day feeling frustrated, right? That's the whole thing. Like open the view, wow, <gasps> let's work harder, let's work harder. Then the, your entire feng shui, that's feng shui to me. Eh? Okay, now I, I see some jiang kui. And like judging based on this, right, the soil is pretty solid. Like there are a lot of irresponsible uh, developers. <clears throat> Just because they know that it's going to be grass on top, the debris from the construction, like the brick walls or whatsoever, they will just throw in the empty soil. Then they just put up, top up with some earth and some soil like that, right? And just plant the grass on top. Then sometimes when we open up, right, like because my, my father bought a bungalow in Sepang last time, then we dig out, right? All our construction debris. No wonder whatever we plant, right, all cannot survive. Because down there is all cement or brick in there. So this one is legit solid, so I think it's good. But it's only like a 10 cm kind of surface only. Because like this also costs money. Mm. So these are protection layers to the soil. And this is the actual soil that can host 
plants uh, not like some because not all soil can have plants surviving on them uh, so like just now the cow grass also you know cow grass got different grade yeah i, I mentioned before right so there's a there's something like the the helicopter thing by doraemon you know padang right that's actually the seed for cow grass so you have a two wing one or a tree wing one so that's how we determine whether like the quality cow grass or a non-quality cow grass i forgot <laughs> i forgot which one is better mr editor then, uh, so like how you plant cow grass because they come in patches in bricks. So uh, how do you plant? I think they will show later. Lah. Those are bricks, obviously, but there are cement sand bricks and they are clay bricks. They are also facing bricks. So they are different grades of bricks depending on what you want to use them for, okay? Last time it was all solid clay bricks because walls were load bearing. You don't have columns and beam. So the brick wall are actually built to withstand load and hold a building. That's why you need quality ones. So cement sand bricks are way cheaper. They are very brittle and they can just like you can not not me lah, but you can actually just like crack them easily. But they are just as feelers. You just use them as feelers. That's why in a lot of terrace houses right now, the partition wall between rooms are all using this but only the brick wall between units needs to be the solid one mm. then facing bricks are the red bricks that are used for facade those need to look very nice so if those are burnt or baked in a better red then those looks way nicer like all those old buildings like in KL Pack and all those right last time all nice bricks one now because of cost efficiency we cut corners here and there uh, so these are just fillers That is a compactor. So you have that thing and it just vibrate over. So for a lot of uh, road work, after we have the soil, then we put up to a certain level, then I need to put sand to even out. Then I'll put crusher run, which they are doing right now. Then I'll put with sand again, then I'll just compact. And the specification on the quotation will be, you need to roll that 30 or 50 times. So there'll be a guy to do, 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 But a lot of people do not do that. That's why when rain keeps falling, the road actually sunk because the water flows through the layer of soil within it's not dense enough that's why all collapsed so but this is like porous. yes porous <laughs> technical yeah well you can see the huge pylon right in front and and that's that's a debate by itself like do you buy a house next to of course if can avoid avoid law but there's a huge buffer assigned from the pylon itself but there's still a debate like a lot of people like cannot like infertile infertility like oh staying next to it like my, my manantu cannot get pregnant uh, but once they move out they can get pregnant then sometimes like have you thought about the reason being you because they moved out then they got pregnant then like of course it's rude for me to tell the, the auntie la, but then like they say a magnetic wave or whatsoever. To a certain extent, I don't know, there are were, there were two sides to this. There are science papers saying that, hey, this one is actually, that's why they set the 30 meters buffer. After the 30 meters, you can build whatever you want because it's safe. They didn't form this 30 meters out of nowhere, plucked from the sky. But then other people say, yeah, fake one. Just because of uh, land efficiency or whatsoever. But most of the time, pylons, right, like this, right, from one pylon to another, the wires, the cables will go through, right? Those in-between spaces are actually no man's land. It belongs to TMB la. But you see a lot of those plantation companies. They plant trees, one, right? All the trees grow so nice, what? I don't see radioactive or whatever electronic magnetic wave affecting their growth. I don't know, right? If you have some comments, just put it down. Wow, that would be cool. Wow, they also have survey lines, on there. No, I mean, you, you see the benang, you see the string, yeah, so they actually... There's a guide, right? Yeah, as a guide. Ah, yeah, why they use artificial turfings? Ah? Easier, man easier to manage, right? So, why they compact just now? Why they need to even out, right? Because what you don't want is stagnant water, again. That's like the roof technology that we talk about. Because once you have a place that is sunken, the water or yeah, so like in artificial uh, turfings, right? Although it's covered and all, you see the extra layer just to man manage water or whatsoever. Sometimes weed still grow from through the thing that's happening in my house right now. 
Yeah, you, they, that's why they uh, that's why they try to eliminate all the chances of them growing out. So those are footings for whatever he wants to put on top, and these are precast means. So like a lot of people talk about precast concrete or precast technology. It means they are cast somewhere and they bring to site in a ready form or a semi-ready form. So if you see a lot of houses, they are built being being built as Legos right now. So they are so the walls are ready off site. Then they just deliver on site, hang over, install, and the next piece come out, next piece come out, next piece come out. It's efficient to a certain extent, but in Malaysia, labor is still relatively cheap. So in comparison to the precision required for all this pre-cast technology, in C2, meaning if I cast on site, there's way more room for error. Because if you've done cast off site, right, the amount of precision needs to be very, very accurate. If you're off by like off by 5 mm, you are you cannot install already. But in situ I can hack a little bit or adjust a little bit, still can go through it. You know, that's why overseas, especially in Australia or Japan, the pre-cast technology is very advanced because labor is very expensive. Malaysia is still relatively cheap. That's why we don't see a lot of adoption of this kind of technology. It's called a mechanical pencil. <laughs> you, that's why you don't flex when you flex actually like. Oh, oh shit! Oh my god! <laughs> and last time it's all flex. Like wow. His YouTube channel is all about building stuff, is it? It's legit, way. He's too. Wow, you see, oh my god. Whoa, the tongue and groove joint. Wow, oh, you can hear the birds. So nice, the house. Whoa, talking about skill sets, man. Like you do 90 degrees is hard enough. They do it in a... Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, glue, yeah. That's the finishes. Vanish. Varnish. I'm just curious why I don't have expansion joints. Expansion joints is when, because when this is in the sun, your wood actually expands. And because they are too close to each other, it will work. So I'm just curious that like, don't he will leave certain extent, like even for tiles or for timber flooring, right? Usually they, at the end before your skirtings, it's not directly attached to the side of the wall. Right? They will have certain buffer. So when the heat hits the floor, it expands a little bit. Even on bridges, when you go to flyovers, <coughs> you'll feel doo -doo, doo -doo. those are concrete with an expansion joint. So when the sun heats, right, it allows the concrete to grow in size a little bit <laughs> in real way. Yeah, it's the same thing. Real concrete will expand. Anything that can absorb heat will expand. So I'm just curious at why. Hmm. I think if I were to do this, right, just to get the tools itself, I already give up already. <laughs> this is so cool, man. Got vacuum somewhere! <laughs> and the vacuum is like the Ghostbuster one. It's from the back one. I think he's building the upper platform or the wall. Those are the wall panels. Yay! Yo, the kid. <laughs> Obviously, he knows what he's doing. You know what's that? That's the water level thing to make sure things that are. You, you see the bubble in the green? Yeah, 90 degrees, yeah. Do 
Yep. And it's always that margin of error. Yeah. Like what you can But it depends on which area, but like why precast again, going back to that, maybe like a 5mm you are way off because it's about percentage. Now sometimes that area is for you to go in. Of course, there will be plus minus like 0.1 or 0.2. Right, but when you go in, you cannot fit the whole slab. It's so hard. You cannot possibly hack or adjust things at sight. I I had this question like, how do you know this is like the coordinates zero zero zero, or how do you know like this is the right place to be? Because the toilet down there needs to be accurate because the piping all go together, man. If you off a little bit, especially the lift core, how do you make sure the lift core is accurate all the way? So they have this survey and they have a reference point always tied back to the survey device to make sure that this is this X point is whatever point it needs to be. That's the role of the surveyor. Then I know a building, I don't know whether I can say this, the leaf core actually slants. So the reference point that the surveyor used was wrong. So the leaf core was like that. So the only way to drop a leaf is to use a smaller leaf car because the only tolerance that you can go down is that within that narrow one. Yeah, so the specs, the original spec was a bigger leaf car that can put 16 people or whatever. Now you can only put eight because that was the only size that can fit. Yeah, and it's impossible that you hack. I cannot tell you lah, I cannot tell you. <laughs> and it was- It's not dangerous, it's just that you have a lot of wasted space also like, so you have like a empty void for no reason. Uh, that's why when we visit properties, a lot, when a lot of people talk about these kind of defect things and that's why like those defect companies, the whole unit is thick. It's ridiculous so you want them to tear down and build a whole house again. Eh? Right? It needs to be very sensible in a way because ultimately the house is man-made. It's not manufactured. Like even cars that are built with machines, Got error. What do you think about houses? That's my point. That's why I really want to encourage like appreciation towards the man hours to your unit. Yes, you pay a lot of money for it, but no one actually appreciates what's within the construction. Eh? And ultimately, like when consumer complain, it's louder when compared to the developer fight back. That's why you don't see a lot of successful cases of reporting. Because they just complain online, then the developer will solve your problem because it hurts their reputation. Not exactly you are correct. Uh, that's very unfortunate in our current climate of consumerism. Lah. That's why a lot of this uh, kampong method of testing things also not right. Man. Hollow, hack the whole thing. Hollow, hack the whole thing. Actually, hollow in a, in a tile flooring, that's also like percentage. So there's all these things need to be taken into account. Lah. But I just like that how the wife is just chilling next to it, you see? <laughs> They're so chill. This looks like Bandasri Sandayan though. Not sure. And this is just me pointing out my observation. Uh, like in other countries, like for a simple task like this, they will wear glove, they will wear helmet, they will wear goggles, right? He wears goggles, but the kids are playing next to him, right? So I think that's the difference in the awareness of safety in Malaysia. So when we go to site, right, a lot of sites are not compliant right? <laughs> to safety. Like we all know, we've been to a few, right? That's why it's it has improved drastically over the years, but I think there are still a lot of room for improvements. Right? I like the vacuum cleaner. That's the feelers. Not the feelers, the skin to the surface. Wow! I'm not very curious about what they do with the joint. The L joint is here. Even the saw. I think that's the roof. So, this, so these are the roof trusses.
and why you use steel instead of uh, wood at this point of time because it's lighter easier to work with right then uh, it can cantilever you can see that it can go really far without any support for a wood it will sag for concrete it's generally impossible uh, so like if you are good with materials, these are the things that you consider a lot. Like you, if you were to use steel as the footing, it wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be sensible because the cost is higher than the concrete. Plus, it's not good for convection. It's good with stress. It's not good with, yeah. You know what's those? Those are waterproofing sealants. Every time there's a joint, those are areas uh, that are gaps, gaps that's prone for leakages. So these are the corrugated And you see like for a normal construction site This is illegal <laughs> Yeah this is so dangerous right Plus you don't have a helmet Plus a lot of things are and, and sometimes when we think like It's just so so short right So low Sean. But a height of 1.2 I think is already hazardous When you fall it Depends how you fall Yeah yeah So that's why it's, it's I know it's very cool to DIY yourself But I have a friend, unfortunately, when the father fixed the gutter of his roof, he fell and passed away. And like for in terms of insurance-wise, right, how do you justify? Really? Like you don't... Yeah, so that's why like, if if anything, right, I, I, I like the spirit of DIY, but like the danger of it, right, I really encourage people to be a little bit more careful to... Wow, I see really also. Oh, rain! Unfortunately, that's the way you test water proving whether got whether got leakages or not. <laughs> that's the very old locking mechanism in all houses, right? This is so satisfying to look, man. That's the gutter. And and this is how plastics stick. Yeah. So like you see all the water pipings that they join. Or oh, there's this special gum. And the gum, right, is somewhat like melting part of the surface of the plastic. So it can attach to each other. That's to hold the the, the gutter, sorry. And it's meant to be a little bit sing it. So you need to direct the water to the outlet. Yeah. So he's harvesting the rainwater also. And then sometimes you like when I got into the construction industry, that's all? You guys use this gum? That was my first reaction also. But because now they have rubber parts to the piping, so because it can cater to more vibration, like because when vibration happens, the joint tend to loosen up over time. So these are always the leakage prone areas. Lah. You know what's that for? And that's a overflow pipe. So when the water is exceeded, right? You see, it exceeded the top level, so it flows out. Then you know, like, oh, it's overflow, it's full. Like uh, it is the same with our house. So sometimes, if the stopper actually malfunction, water starts leaking through because the inlet keeps detecting that the pump is not full. The water keeps going through. So it's. I think most of us who stay high rise no longer know what the water tank looks like, but it's pretty cool and but it's dirty, very dirty. Yeah. He has a plastic cutter, he has a wood cutter, he has a metal cutter. Eh? So you saw what was the problem? The problem was the water from the roof didn't flow into the gutter. So the joint between the gutter and the roof is not accurate. So the water just flow in between the roof and the gutter. But the termination sometimes is also because water do not just flow like that. Sometimes it backs flows like that. So that will also create problem if not addressed properly. So a lot of people they will leave some a longer piece here so the water will just linger on here instead of flowing back. That's why you have the shadow gap. Yeah, that's why you have the gap thing. Every time you have a window slab, right? Yeah, I didn't waste my time teaching y'all. Very good.
That's a partition wall. Yeah, these are crusher ones. It just provides it just provides a solid surface for whatever that is next. If you put crusher run, then you plant grass on top, they will die. <laughs> wow, I am impressed. But I have a few questions though, like such a wonderful outdoor space and you say it's rented yeah like if it's rented right i because it's rented therefore i think he used lighter construction method so if let's say i want to robo gun this structure it's pretty easy i'll just tear down there's no hard solid materials even the footings are just normal see the precast members only that's all and there's no structural loads at all meaning there's nobody that's supposed to climb on top and do things besides him fixing the roof lah. and i think that's also why he does not require a engineer drawing like if I were to do any extension to the house and this is not habitable in a normal authority's uh, eye therefore you don't really need another approval for extra structure and very obvious this is an individual lot it means that uh, you, do, you can do whatever you want to the house without caring about whether like is it against strata act or whatever I think in the strata development you cannot do this maybe you can do some steel structure with glass that's about it uh, so that's borderline already but the spirit right the, the diy spirit like to me if it takes a week to do this the amount of materials and all i cannot like, yeah like the amount of planning that like he's a maestro in this like it looks like he he does this for a living maybe the channel is what he does for a living yeah so he's like where he put the cameras and all right i think it's very nice then the even the water irrigation part it's not overbuilt to what it's supposed to be i think that's great all the people then like, they will build. If it's a habitable thing, then you need to have half brick wall, half other things. So because you need to have somewhat safety against external things. But this one you don't need to. That's why it's a mere timber wall. It's a timber structure and you just put papan in between. I wish the flooring of the internal things would be covered because it's now soil. So if it's like crusher run inside also. And crusher run is just to somewhat have a layer in so you don't have weeds. But eventually, in a year time, half a year time, the weeds all starts growing really, right? You don't really, if you don't really address that. Aesthetically, then it's it's definitely functional. But aesthetically, I don't think it's pleasing. Uh. Because it's not meant to be aesthetically pleasing at all. It's a, it's a workspace. That's why like the tanki behind, I think you store water, you can use the water all the time. And that's the thing, like government only enforce a lot of buildings to harvest rainwater only like four years to five years back. That's there's no rainwater harvesting exercise or design for all the roofs in Malaysia because we rain a lot imagine the water right we we still use pipe water to water our plants by right we can just use grey water means that rainwater or the water that we wash our hands with yeah so those are grey water that we can use for plants we don't have to use fresh water for plants and I think this needs to be way more emphasized but then like the amount of tools and it's just a wrong crowd to me like a lot of people spend a lot of money in those DIY stores and they buy cutters, uh, vacuum cleaner or jet uh, or whatever right to me I have no interest at all like because I tried working in my own house fixing pipes right pipes dimensions is so weird it's not mm so you know like quarter inch one sixth of an inch uh third three fourth and inch, three quarter inch like, huh yeah but this actually simplifies the the actual house construction as an owner how do i take this if my tenants actually build this yeah so like when he leaves right do we need to take down because that is a condition like to replace back as the original condition so then but if it's for work by all means right i think in order to survive but i just admire the area the outdoor space lah. a lot of space then i think it's cool like definitely it's admirable I, I i really hope that more people can diy stuff with their free time because instead of just netflixing and doing all dumb things right but this one is really like do and he makes this as a content and everybody likes to watch right i think this one got a lot of views right in his Ooh. 
and and one more thing will be the electrical connection. I think that's that. I think that's uh, getting out from the house. I think so. How do you pull out? Is it from a socket to extension in again? Then how do you protect it from moisture and this and that? So he didn't elaborate that. Then because the roof, the upper, the upper structure of the enclosed space is actually exposed. So there's a direct connection from you see the roof right directly into the column. Uh, then you can see some wiring here and there. I, okay, I know how things should be done, but you pass me all this material, I don't know how to build anything, right? I can't even make a straight wall, right? So, <laughs> and, uh, regulations are in place only if the space is habitable. So it's to ensure like wirings cannot pull from the bottom, it needs to be from the top. But when a lot of irresponsible contractors, in order to save more cost, because your wires and sockets are usually at the bottom, they just pull from the bottom, it's cheaper. But it's supposed to go up the wall and to come. Yeah, so that's a that's a regulation for wirings. Right? Yeah, so like or even like pipings in walls. Sometimes when you see in the toilet, like why I am very fearful of renovation around bathrooms is you don't know where the pipings are. Logically, it should be straight, lah. Right, the water inlet here, so it should be straight up to the ceiling that it connects. But sometimes contractors build like that just to save the angle. Yeah, you, you get what I mean? Yeah, so they build. So sometimes when you Fix a mirror, zoo. Wait, why here leaking one? Yeah, so that's the very uh, hideous part about construction if you don't know what you're... Of course, when it comes from the developer, there needs to be certain guidelines. Lah. But after renovation, right, especially when you buy a sub sale, you don't know what's inside one, until you hack. And some even electrical wiring, there needs to be a protection layer, pipe to lay, put in, then you only put your conduits, right? A lot of people don't do. Straight away, the wire is just like, uh, then like rats can bite them or whatsoever. Then like, it's, uh, you really don't know. One. Then that's why old houses are like that. Very functional where you have the wirings laid outside of the brick walls and the concrete. So anything wrong, you just like open up the bracket, fix it, put back the bracket. Now you don't know where's the wiring. And yeah, so, so this to me, again, amazing effort. I wish that it could be designed better. Like if rain, right? Most of the surface are gonna be wet. Lah. I guess if I'm, I think this shows the potential of having a corner lot as well. I think the corner lot, especially for an individual title corner lot, right? A lot of people will just whack uh, the side of the dining table and they just build way more. And especially for, not end lot, lah. end lots not so much, but corner lots especially. The dining space, it's a very special space because you have the sliding door at the dining space always. Then you have this outdoor indoor relationship that's very very nice, but a lot of things to do. Like you see the original condition of the house, right? The lama of lalangs. Yo, my god, it's crazy one. Like it never end one eh. Like you say, be a lalang so you can survive, right? Oh yo, never end one. That's the very unfortunate truth. A lot of people who buy uh, this as investment, like your neighbor is an investor, right? The house is left empty. They have all this lalang, right? You cannot do anything about it. But if it's a strata property, the end lot or a corner lot is not maintained, the management office can write to the owner to ask him to maintain one. Or we cut for you, then we charge you money. Because it's disrupting the living of your neighbors. Mm, so strata one. So it's uh, yeah. so that's this benefit. That we but I'm very curious on like what else does he do in the channel. So I think we'll just put the channel down below. And I guess this is this is the thing that's missing in our current scene right now. Everything we pursue like fast, effective, right? but there's no more craftsmanship. There's no more DIY spirit. Do I appreciate hand craft craftsmanship? But I I my craftsmanship is in the video that we make. Right? <laughs> that's the best, right? If not, it's like I can I draw drawings that can do this better. But if for a normal thing, like I can't man. The best is I can vacuum money. I would want the Ghostbuster thing. Yeah, I think that's all for this episode. This is a rather direct one. Cool. And if you have any more suggestions, do just let us know. Uh, we will go through way more. Yeah, that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys on the next one. Ciao.